you're welcome because we're going to save your season by jumping into some of the most overrated players in fantasy basketball right now. If you avoid drafting these guys, you're going to have a good time. If you draft these guys, you're going to have a bad time. How are you doing, Jake? It's been a tough day. We're, I, I don't like talking about negative things, but we're going to we're, we're going to do it today and hopefully next next time we can talk about some positive things. Hey, this is a negative video, but it's what the people need. If you have cancer and you go to the doctor and he's like, I don't want to tell this guy he has cancer. He's like, you know what? You have a great personality. Okay, doc, but do I have cancer or not? You have a great personality. You have a beautiful personality, Kate Cunningham. That's the first player that I'm going to tell you you shouldn't be drafting. It's Cade Cunningham. Now, if you are a subscriber of this Trash Talk channel, don't forget to like and subscribe, by the way. You know that I told you not to draft Cade last year. And Cade got hurt, and he was a giant bust. Whether you got him in the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth round, doesn't matter where you took Cade. He was a bust last year. But now he's healthy. He's busting on people in the offseason. And some analysts, I won't name them, are saying that he could play like a first-rounder this year. Should you be taking Cade Cunningham? Jake, what's your opinion? I don't think you should be taking him in the first or second round. I don't think there's any upside there. Uh, if you're getting him in the fifth or sixth round, I think there is some upside. So I, I wouldn't – Josh is going to tell you not to draft him. I would say don't avoid him, but don't overpay for him. If you can get him in the fifth round, I think there's some upside there. But anything above that, you're kind of playing with fire. He puts up really good popcorn stats. I think there's a chance that he averages like – 23 7 and 7 with decent defensive stats for a guard but i just i don't see the field goal percentage being good enough to be a first let's talk player. about some numbers because people's opinions and people's feelings don't matter that much right now kate cunningham his adp is currently trending around 42 43 and those numbers are going to change because it's the beginning of the season what was he last year in per game 140 but we're going to ignore that because he got hurt really early in the season he played limited games Two years ago, when Cade played a full season, what did Cade put up? He put up in 32 minutes per game. He gave you 17.4 points, 5.5 rebounds, 5.5 assists. And he was the 91st best player. So the last full look at Cade we got, he was the 91st best player. He had a significant shin injury. Now, I'm not a doctor. Well, I'm a doctor of law. I have a Juris doctorate. But that's not relative here. Okay, what is relative is I have no idea what a shin injury comeback looks like. I can tell you about ACL rehab. I can tell you what an Achilles is, MCL. I've been around basketball enough that I'm familiar with all the major injuries. I, I've never personally experienced or seen a friend break a shin or have a shin surgery. Have you? Do you even know what that is, Jake? No, I, I don't know if there's much history in this I injury. have no idea if he's going to be able to be the same athletically or better athletically. But I'm going to go ahead and give him that he's the same athletically. The Detroit Pistons are a team that is full of youth. It lacks direction. And there's not a ton of shooting. You have Bogdanovich. But besides that, it's hard to find shooting on that roster. Defenses will be able to key in on an inexperienced Cade Cunningham. His turnovers and his percentages will be bad. Why will his turnovers be bad? It won't always be his fault. Sometimes it will be his teammates' fault. But besides that, he wasn't showing at full health that he had amazing shot selection, that he had an amazing ability to create buckets. He can get shots off, but he's not creating buckets at a high percentage. When you have bad percentages, high turnovers, and yeah, you have the popcorn, points, assists, rebounds. He was basically a 25-5 and five guy already, and he still wasn't good at fantasy. Do not pick this man in the 30s, 40s, or 50s, hoping for him to make a 50-point jump. 50 rankings jump. You need him to be 50 rankings better just to get break even. That's my first pick. Cade Cunningham, don't pick the man. I don't care if he's healthy. I don't care if he's hurt. Don't draft him. Who's your first player that you're saying is do not draft, Jake? I need you to raise the intensity. I need you to sit on a thumbtack. All right, so we're well, we're each picking five players. Uh, you went on a nice Cade rant there. So I'm, I'm going to talk about Giannis as my first guy. I think – He's, he's definitely the highest picked player on my list. He's going at about nine and a half. So he's going around pick nine or 10 in drafts. And uh, I understand the appeal. He was number 10 last year in a punt free throw build. So if you just don't care about free throws, he's a top 10 player. Um, but if you're taking him in the top 10, you're, you're not gaining an advantage 
with punting a stat. So you, like when we talk about punting, a lot of times um, we think about players being bad at a category. Giannis is so bad at free throws that it's almost impossible to make it up with the rest of your draft. So you're you're um, pigeonholing yourself into a way to, to draft the rest of your team. And the, the more I think about it and the more I try and figure out ways to build around him, he has a weird mix of stats for a punt free throw player that make it really hard to build this, uh, a, like a, a, a successful team around him. Like you, you, he's one of his best cat- categories is points. And most punt free throw players are bad at points because free throws are a multiplier where you get more points that way. If you're better free throw shooter, you're going to score more points generally. And they're also highly correlated. So it's just the way to build around Giannis is so hard that I, I just don't think he warrants being your best I hope player. you guys at home, by the way, don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you guys at home appreciate that we will only ever disagree if it's a real disagreement. And you know what? On this one, I'm not going to fake outrage. I think Giannis is an excellent pick. When you picked him in the pre-draft rankings, when we were doing our little pre-draft before the video, I was like, oh, damn, I forgot Giannis. I left him off my top five. So I think that that's a great pick. I would like to point out that Giannis is only really effective if you're punting free throw percentage and probably also threes. Last year, Giannis had a down year. And if you punted free throw percentage and threes, Giannis came in six on the player rater. But you know who came in third? Nick Claxton. A guy that you can get in the 40s and 50s. So why are you picking Giannis in the first round when you can get a player in the 40s and 50s consistently, $20 on auction? Nick Claxton, significantly better than Giannis' attempt to free throw. Okay. I know Jake agrees with me. Let's get to the next person on this. Just take him in the first round. Why don't you just take (laughs) Claxton in the first round? I might. I get way further than taking Cade in the first round. Okay, uh, next player that I have on my man, I don't want to draft him. I don't like him. This one's going to be controversial, and I'm ready for you in the comment section. Please come in the comment section and know that I keep a firm backhand for your bitch ass with your anonymous comments. No, I love I love the fans, but the, but the haters, I'm here. I'm ready for the haters. Number two on my list of do not draft this man, Joel MB. If you're a fan of the channel, you know that this guy basically slept with my mom metaphorically, and I don't want him near my team. So what am I going to do if I have the number two pick in Snake? I'm going to draft Joel Embiid because he's the second best fantasy player in a sharp league. He's the fourth best fantasy asset because we play auction and it shows you the real value of players really fast. Halliburton, SGA, there's sometimes Tatum. There's multiple players that will go for higher in auction than Joel Embiid, but Snake is different. Also, it depends on the level of expertise in your league. In terms of per-game stats, Joel Embiid is by far the second-best player in fantasy. But when you layer in what's going on with the Philadelphia 76ers, when you layer in his injury history, when you layer in his body type and his overall play style where he throws his body into players and he tries to get free throws, Joel Embiid is a nightmare to own. And I believe that he is like playing with dynamite, playing Russian roulette. You're, you're putting a ball in the chamber – Every single week that you own Embiid. So what am I doing? If I have the number two pick, I'm taking Joel Embiid and I'm immediately trading him to someone that has a higher risk tolerance. If I could trade the two pick for the four or the five pick and I get myself a Halliburton, an SGA, a Tatum, plus something else, like you don't just trade two for five, get their sixth rounder, get their seventh rounder as well. That's what you do. I'm not getting Joel Embiid ever in auction and I'm not getting Joel Embiid at the two pick and then sitting on him for the entire season. Joel Embiid, number two. That's my argument. Yeah, I I tend to agree. I think the injury history is a big concern there, and taking him second, he's just such a big guy, and he's had injuries throughout his career. I mean, he he didn't play his first two seasons, so he's he's already thirty. Like he's he's not a young dude anymore. Uh, I think there's there's validity in not taking him yep. second. Um, my my next pick is going to be Pascal Siakam. I've been seeing him go as high as the second round in some leagues uh, and like never really falling past the fourth round. His current ADP is um, 30.2. So that's mid mid third round ish. Um, And I I just don't see it for him this year. I think the popcorn stats like Cade is going to be there. I think he might average 25, eight and six or something like that. Uh, He doesn't really get defensive stats anymore. He did when Kawhi was there because he was playing a secondary role. But after that, his defensive stats kind of disappeared. But I think it's 
his situation is similar to Kate Cunningham this year, where Toronto is just a, a shit fire. I don't know. It, the, the offense it just makes no sense to me. They're, they don't have a point guard. They're running Dennis Schroeder as their point guard, and they just don't have any shooting around Siakam, uh, Hurdle, and Scotty Barnes. Like None of those guys are, are plus shooters. None of them can really shoot off the move. They're bringing two shooters off the bench and Gary Trent Jr. and a rookie named Grady Dick, who is an awesome shooter but has no NBA experience. I just don't see a way where Siakam can be an efficient player. So again, I think just like with Cade, there's going to be those late shot clock heaves that like have no chance of going in that really hurt your field goal percentage. If you take two of those a game and you make them at a 19% clip, your field goal percentage is going to drop significantly. And I think that'll push him down the rankings. If you're punting field goal percentage and free throw percentage and turnovers. If you're playing the popcorn stats build, I think he can be useful, but I, I just don't see how he can uh, justify being taken in the third round. I agree with everything you said. I'm even going to add something on top. I think by stats, Siakam is trending into overrated. And there's one thing I want to point out here, right? If you're picking a player 80 that projects to be a hundred, that's bad because it's 20 slots, but the difference between picking a player 30th, versus 20th or 30th versus 40th, that actually affects your team more. That five or 10 slots of value or that five or 10 slots of production in the first, second, and third round matters way more than 20 or 30 slots that you effed up in the ninth or the 10th round. So I will say Siakam being picked 10 places, 15 places ahead of where he was last year, it's bad from a numbers perspective. We want to structure our bets. We will not win every bet we make this year. At some point, Jake and I are going to bet on Nick Claxton, and I'm going to take his money. I'm going to take his money right out of his little baby's hand. I'm going to steal candy from his child. I'm going to eat the candy, okay? (laughs) But we're not going to win every bet, okay? But when you structure your bets in a 12-round, 13-, 14-round draft, you don't need to win all of them. One of the principles that we believe in on this channel is that you try to pick players that are projected to exceed or be at the value you take them. If you take them 20 spots early of what their previous performance has been, you need to win a small bet just to break even. And then there's multiple things that have to go right. So I think Siakam's the wrong price, but there's one more thing that scares me, and it's that I don't trust the Toronto Raptors' direction. They definitely don't have a team to compete. They just let FVV go. Are they going to blow it up? If they blow it up, is Siakam shelved because they think he's part of the future? He seems a little too old for that. Or is he traded to a team where now he's the third option? If Siakam goes to the Thunder, how do I like his shot opportunities behind SGA, behind the usage Giddy's going to need, behind their desire to emerge with Chet? I don't know if Siakam would be the center of the universe on an Oklahoma City Thunder team. I don't know what he looks like if he goes to the Knicks and he has to play with Julius Randle and he has to play with – um. This is so embarrassing. Jalen Brunson, whose name I definitely remember. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's a good pick. Um, no disagreement there. We haven't really disagreed yet. We've just added on to each other. Let's see if we can change that. My number third do not draft player, because it's only going to go bad for you, is Victor Wembinyama, a.k.a. Wemby Mania, currently sitting at an ADP of somewhere between 31 and 32 meaning that he is your third rounder. I want to refer you guys back to a fantasy player. You might know him. His name's Luka Doncic, okay? Luka is one of the most successful young players of all time. And in fantasy, his rookie year, do you guys know what he was? Not in a punt. He was outside of the top 100. Specifically, he was 101 his rookie year. Very, very, very hard for a rookie to be an elite fantasy player. If you go through the last 10 years, there's very few players that had effective top 75 seasons. Kristaps Porzingis was one of them that jumps out to mind. So if you're picking Wemby in the 30s, you're saying, I don't think the Spurs are going to shut him down and tank again. I think you're on the wrong side of that bet. You're saying, I think he's going to be able to play most of the games in an 82-game season when he was only playing like one game a week in France. One game every five days. I don't like that bet. You're looking at this human slender man, this stick figure drawn with sneakers, and you're saying this guy is going to be able to play physical basketball 
with Joel Embiid flopping on top of him, with Clint Capella elbowing him in the sternum. What's not a sternum? A mildum? A frownum? He doesn't even have a sternum. He has a, he has a, a happyum. He has a pleasant. He has a pleasantum. I don't see. I think Victor Wembanyama is going to put up some crazy games. He's going to have like a twenty-seven point five block game in the first month of the season, and then I don't trust him to play most of his games the second half of the season because of injury, because of the Spurs' direction, because of his body type. He's also going to have a lot of turnovers, and he's on a Spurs team. Uh, what's the number one offensive threat on that Spurs team besides Wembanyama? Zach Collins, me, you. Keldon Johnson? It's not Trey Jones. I I fade. I don't know what it is. Wemben Yama, anyone in the in the in the chat who wants to bet me real money, I will put real money up. Anyone that wants in the chat, up to a thousand dollars. I'll put up to a thousand dollars of my own money that Wemben Yama does not finish top 40 player this year in totals. If you wanna, if you wanna, if I'm giving you guys 10 okay. slots on his ADP. Wemin Yama does not finish top 40 in totals. That's my that's my hot take. Jump in the comment section if you want to Venmo bet me. I'm good for it. The money will go up. Okay. That is my pick. Do you want to disagree with Wemby? How do you feel about it? I can't disagree with you just based on the fact that he's a rookie. I just I tend to stay away from rookies. Um it there's yeah, it's just we can't a circle jerk of a it's just a fun. circle jerk of a podcast. Where's I, the where's the where's the where's the spice? Well, I, I guess the only argument I can have for you is that maybe his ADP is inflated because there are some dynasty leagues who are drafting, and he's going really high in dynasty leagues. He's going like top five in most dynasty leagues at this point. So if you're doing dynasty That's startups right. on yeah. Yahoo, maybe his maybe he's being inflated that way. So, but in in the auction drafts that we've been doing, I see him going more for around twenty to twenty three, twenty four dollars, yeah. which would 40, push him down a little further than this. So, so I think may, maybe he's a little inflated just by the numbers, and I think maybe as we get closer to the a- actual drafts, he'll drop down. But even then, even if you're picking him at forty, I just I, don't I see would that much either. rather have a Nick Claxton at forty. <laughs> Not again, <laughs> guys. Um, okay, my next a, one is a drinking game where every time I slip Nick Claxton unnecessarily into the conversation, you have to take a shot. I mean, whoever's listening, whoever's or listening, just, whoever's home, watching, it's a drinking game you can play. Okay, I like that game. We're currently looking for a liquor. It can be for all of our videos. Yeah, it's for every video ever. We're currently looking for a liquor sponsor. By the way, my wife is emailing liquor companies to try to get us a sponsorship. And uh, you can add on to that if if I'm the one who brings up Claxton, then you have to drink. Oh the yeah, bottle. you got to finish the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> all right, your third pick. Okay, my. Yeah, so my next pick, I think you're going to argue with this one, is Mikhail Bridges. And he's been going top 20 in ADP. He's sitting at 19 and a half. So you're taking him as your second best player in 12-team leagues. And I guess on the turn in 10-team leagues, if people do that. Mikhail Bridges last year, he was um, ranked 32nd overall last year in, in averages. Um, 28th over the last three months and 25th over the last two months. But Josh, can you guess what his best Z score was over the last two and three months uh, of the season? Turnovers? Which is that? Free, Free throw percentage. Guess. Free throw would be my second guess. Yeah. So Mikhail Bridges really helps you in points, in free throw percentage, at least in at the end of the season, and in threes. So he was um, one of those guys who helps you pretty significantly in those categories, but there's no Z score over two. And then he doesn't really hurt you anywhere. So his main, his main um, uh, excellence, I guess, in fantasy basketball is that he's good at a few things and doesn't hurt you in anything else, which is really useful to have on a fantasy team, but it doesn't give you the upside of guys who you can build around. So if you're taking him, I, I have no problem taking Mikhail Bridges in the third round. I think he's overrated just by a round. I just don't want him to be my second best player uh, because the we saw his upside last year. He did it over the last two months, over the last three months. He was awesome. He was about a second-round player on average stats, but he had a really crazy hot streak. He's never done that in the past. I, I, like, I'm not going to kill you if you take him in the second round. I don't think it's the worst pick in the world, but I think he's more of a third-round player. Yeah, we're going to disagree. 
There's going to be some violence on the channel right now. Horrible take, Jake. Horrible take and shame on you. You should go to a lesser quality YouTube channel. I can name several. I won't, but I could name several. You go to a lesser quality channel with that take. Let me give you one stat. I'm going to defeat you with one stat. You know, I'll probably use more than one, but one stat. 83. 83. That's my stat. 83 games played. We're living in a fantasy world where guys don't play basketball anymore. They get paid. Like Ben Simmons is happy to get paid without playing basketball. He will play basketball on the sun. He'll go play in the Philippines. He'll play in Germany. I don't think Mikhail Bridges. Did he do that one on the sun? He did that one while he was playing on Mars. Twice the gravity. Three times the difficulty, okay? Mikhail Bridges is going to play. He's of the whole, all the NBA, he's the most likely to play the most games for you. And the new, the Brooklyn Nets, I almost said New Jersey Nets. The Brooklyn Nets do not own their own draft pick this year. This means that the franchise has no desire to tank. The franchise has no desire to tank. And the player has no desire to sit. What that means is you have the highest chance of a player you pick in the first couple rounds playing out of anyone that's out there with Mikhail Bridges. Let's just jump over really quickly and look at some of the other players that are ahead of him. Joel Embiid, major injury risk. Steph Curry, 35. LaMelo missed almost an entire season last year. Kyrie Irving, he could tweet a suspension. Dame Lillard could be a holdout. Kevin Durant is 35 and is on the wrong side of foot problems. Giannis just had a knee surgery. Anthony Davis. Are, are you saying you should take Bridges over I'm all not. These guys? I'm saying that availability is the best ability. And when you look at player value, you have to bake in the fact that there has not been a more available player in the NBA over the last five years than Mikhail Bridges. His talent on a per game basis is below taking him in the top 20, but his availability is first round availability. And when you average it out, I think he's fine. I don't think he's underrated, but to call him overrated is disrespectful to a man that works very hard to bring joy to so many young children. Okay, I have a re really <laughs> young children. I have a really, really quick counterpoint. Um, past injury history is not indicative of future injuries. Well, you're wrong. I mean, I'll tell you that. Uh, uh, past health is not an indi indicator of future lack of injuries, but past injuries is indicative of higher risk of re injury. That is true. There's things, Zion's weight, just physics. There's a certain amount of cartilage that you have in your meniscus, and it can handle a certain amount of cushion. When you add five pounds of body weight to a human that jumps, every five pounds you weigh is about 50 pounds of pressure when you land. So if you're Zion and you're running around 40, 50, 60, 70 pounds overweight of what your frame can support, as you get bigger, your muscles get bigger, but your, your ligaments don't necessarily get bigger. They don't, you can't train ligaments and your, uh, your cartilage. Does, like we all have the same cartilage when we're born. So, yeah, no, I, I think a player that has an injury history, it's going to be hard for them to put that in their past. And Mikhail Bridges is as healthy as you can get. By the way, that, that little thing I just did for the last two minutes, if any of that was wrong, I'm not a doctor. Let's make this one easy for my next one. Julius Randle, last year he was 70-ish per game. His exact numbers were uh, 74. And his current ADP... Is 55, 20 slots. People are giving him that New York Knicks boost. He also had an ankle cleanup at the end of the offseason. So one side of the argument is he didn't play healthy, and now he will be healthy. The other side of the argument is we don't even know if he's going to be able to have the same foot speed coming back from that surgery. Joe Harris had a mild ankle cleanup, not the same player after it. Uh, we'll just I don't think you're going to disagree with Julius Randle there, so we'll say, you know. I think he's a hard player to hard draft. Hard player period. to draft. Who's your next one? All right, my next one is Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole has been going at an average of 52.8, so he is your fourth to fifth round draft pick in a lot of leagues. So you're you're basically saying he's your fifth best player. He was pretty good two years ago in fantasy. Last year he was just terrible. He, I guess the punch really messed with him uh, to start the year, and then he just he never came on. He was like 140-something in rankings, 148, which – means he was pretty much undraftable. If you were punting field goals, maybe he was pretty solid. But I, I just don't see taking him in the fifth round as a, a good idea for a few reasons. We talked about teams that are going to tank. I think the Wizards might end up with the worst record in the whole league this, in the whole league this year. 
And I think that's on purpose. This is their first time ever bottoming out or for a long time. We've, people have been yelling at them to do it for years. They finally traded Beal. This is the year they're they're taking the ship all the way down. They might win like 19 games. And Poole is basically their only offensive weapon. It's him and Kuzma. So I think the shutdown risk is real. I think they're not going to play any defense as a team. So he's just not going to get defensive stats. Um, and I, I think people are projecting him for just too many points. I don't think he's as good of a scorer as people think. He's heavily reliant on... Um, others creating shots for him. He was really good in the Warriors system because Draymond Green was able to find him in the minutes where Draymond Green wasn't playing. He was actually pretty poor over the last few years. So, um, you know, and, and the Warriors system is, is very conducive to guys who can shoot and move off ball like Steph Curry, but Jordan Poole kind of played in that mold, nowhere near as good, but in that mold. So I, I just don't see how he's going to average 25 points a game, which is the only way that he can justify being drafted in the fifth round. If he's averaging 22 a game, he and his field goal percentage is that bad. He's you know probably 80th or 90th best player. I think he's going to struggle. And even if he put up massive stats in the first couple months, there's always the chance that the Wizards sit him in the second half of the year as they try to go for that absolute bottom draft pick. Okay, I'm going to give you my last pick. Ya ya ya, Morant. Ya Morant has proven you know in a race to the bottom against Miles Bridges and uh, Kevin Porter Jr. <laughs> Ya Morant is up there in, in who can be the dumbest, who can be the biggest fumbler of the bag in the history of basketball. Latrell Sprewell. Not since Latrell Sprewell have we seen the talent of losing money and destroying your reputation that Ja Morant has. So, yeah, uh, he was only like the 94th, yeah, 94th best player in per game last year. So he puts up big popcorn stats. If you're playing points, I guess he's okay. But also, why are you watching this channel if you play points? There's plenty of other channels. For you guys that that, that are more so baby speed don't, don't do it don't, don't play just, points they're not watching 35 minutes into this pod or 30 whatever it is no. um okay yeah john ja morant he, he wasn't good when he played he's gonna sit out 25 games if you do have an ir plus spot or something like that and he can fit on it it and you're getting him like in the ninth round i don't hate it if you're picking him in the seventh round and there's other players that are out there that can actually help your team you're going to have – you're like, oh, I have a slot. I can stash him. I got news for you, buddy. Other players on your team are going to get hurt. So for the first two or three weeks, it's going to be a free John ja Morant stash. But then after a couple more weeks, you're going to be like, oh, damn, I need this slot. I've just given up four or five weeks of wins to hold on to John ja Morant. So don't draft him. Ja Morant. John Morant's not – he wasn't even good in fantasy last year when he played. He was outside the top 100. He was ranked 102. I had him I had him 94. What are you looking at? 100 and – Per game. Did you do two? totals? I had per. I have it in per game. I don't know why we'd we're be looking, looking at other We might things. be looking but at different way. Z-score calculators. That's a whole – we're doing – by the way, don't forget to like and subscribe. We're doing a video on all the tools, a bunch of different Z-score calculators that are out there, a lot of different ways to calculate stats. Yeah, but he, either way, he wasn't an effective fantasy player last year, basically because he doesn't get the D stats, he turns it over a lot, and he doesn't shoot threes, I think, are the, the main reasons for that. But the, the point is, like, if you're stashing him as a ninth round pick, the best you're probably going to get is eighth or ninth round value from him when he plays. And last year, they eased him in after the suspension. So I just, I don't see the purpose in drafting him, honestly, drafting him at all. And if you are going to draft him, I would just take him as my last pick. And that's just not going to happen in anybody's draft. So I'd, I would just stay away. Uh, my my last player is kind of a reach, I would think, as a, as an overrated player, just because of the stats he put, to, put up last year. But that's Walker Kessler. He was incredible last year down the stretch. As uh, In the last two months of the season, he was the 19th ranked player. So that would have been the equivalent of a mid-second round pick in a 12 team league and he he did that on the backs of just incredible three categories he was a field goal rebound and block monster just like i think he averaged yeah he averaged three blocks per game really good rebounds and he barely missed he had some games where he went like nine for 10 10 for 11 he was really awesome um, but that was down the stretch of the season last year when a lot of teams weren't trying and uh, i i just don't think there's that kind of upside for him for the whole season he's being drafted at about 41 41 and a half so that would make him your fourth best player uh, but he's basically a, a punt like he, you have to punt free throws and i think his 
his averages and his his uh, ranking is very inflated by just like the way Z scores work that he's just so high up in a few categories and he hurts you in other categories so much that um, but the, the the way he hurts you is much less than what he helps you if that makes any sense so I just I don't I don't think he's worthy of being your fourth best player on your team he's gonna get a lot of blocks and maybe you just don't have to worry about blocks after that but I just don't see the value there in taking him in the fourth round. You know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say I don't disagree with that. The Jazz are one of the scariest teams to own. Um, I expect them to tank. I expect them to trade and sit people. That's going to do it for this video. Who did we miss? Who do you disagree with? Who do you want us to talk about? Throw it in the comment section. Guys, as always on this channel, don't forget to drink the blood of your enemies and crush the souls of your friends. Trash talk out. Clax facts.